Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. One of the most popular SUV is surprisingly the Kia Telluride, which hit the market a number of years ago and is taking the industry by storm because of the unusual but beautiful styling, really great design, and actually really good engineering as well. In fact, I actually own the 2020 Toyota Highlander and I like this one a lot better. So let me tell you three things I love and three things I'm not too crazy about on this new Kia Telluride. The first thing I like on this 2023 Kia Telluride is the engineering and manufacturing quality, which might surprise you because this is a Kia and you might not expect Kia to be as good as Toyota in terms of uh, overall quality. But take a look with me and I'll show you why this thing is as good and in some cases better than some of the other Japanese brands. If you were to look at the, um, the fit and finish of how the panels all align together, which is one of the first thing I do when, I, when it comes to checking for quality. You can tell on the Kia, the uh, actual gap is about 3.5 millimeter and it's very consistent. Even around the corners here, it's almost perfect alignment. And the front fender and the front door also, you can tell it's perfect alignment. Same thing here and same thing over here. So if you were to compare this to many of the competitors, the gaps are usually wider and the alignment isn't as good as this one. Uh, by the way, this Telluride is built in the US in its uh, Georgia factory. And uh, I'm actually quite impressed with the overall quality. And even the paint is pretty solid. There's no orange peel or at least excessive orange peel, I should say. And then the, the paint gloss and the clear coat is excellent. Uh, so if you don't know any better, taking a look at this, you know what, it looks as good or about the same or even a little bit better than the Highlander that we own. So the uh, first thing I really like is both the exterior and also in the, even the interior quality, which I get into a moment, everything fits well, nothing goes out of place and fit and finish and the quality of the plastic and material is really good. So that's the first thing I really like. The second thing that I really love and most of you guys will love is the gorgeous interior. Just take a look at this expansion of luxury, of uh, wood style trim combined with aluminum finish. I mean, if you don't know any better, you would think this is a $100,000, $150,000 luxury vehicle from a BMW or some other high-end brands. You've got 12.3 inches, 12.3 inches side by side to give you a big expansive view. Uh, and all of the buttons are still here, so we're not losing that very important tactile finish. And the combination of this brown color with the black and gray trims are just absolutely fantastic. As I mentioned earlier, the quality is also really good. I've been looking at the stitching, the material fit and finish, and also to make sure everything is tight. And you know what? There's no rattles or squeaks. And the whole thing feels absolutely solid. So if you don't know any better, you'll think this is a very expensive model, but obviously it's a very well priced. So interior is gorgeous and very up to date. The only complaint I have is that the Apple CarPlay is not wireless. You have to actually use the cord, which is a bit surprising. But other than that, it's super good. The third good thing is the way this thing drives in terms of comfort and refinement. I actually drove this uh, last couple of days to and from Seattle, which is a couple hundred miles away. So I drove extensively and on the highway, this thing is just gorgeous, very quiet, extremely smooth, almost no wind noise. And I was using the adaptive cruise control, which is more or less hands-free. You do have to put your hand on the steering and put a little bit of weight on it. But otherwise, this thing steered itself even through mountainous curves and twisty road. It steered all the way from Vancouver to Seattle and also back. In terms of highway comfort, in terms of overall feel of the ride and the suspension, it's totally first class. And this is where maybe Kia and its parent company Hyundai has really progressed over time because it's definitely better than the Highlander that we own and many other competitors in this price range as well. Uh, also, it still has a V6 engine, a 3.8 liter V6 engine, and uh, that is running on Atkinson cycle, so it is pretty fuel efficient. And uh, I'm just thankful that we get V6 engine this one versus the Highlander, which is moving to a 2.4 turbocharged four cylinder. So the interior was gorgeous, but the ride is even better. Now let's get into three things I'm not too crazy about because obviously this is not a perfect vehicle. The first thing I don't like is the steering feel when you're driving this thing. I did say that it's very fine, very quiet, very smooth, perfect for passengers and also for long highway drives. 
but the steering is extremely light and has almost no feeling from the road. It's extremely numb and therefore it's really hard to assess the road conditions uh, through your hands because there's not much feedback from the road to your hands. Uh, now there is a sport mode in the center console but putting into sport mode doesn't make much of a difference. It just makes the steering a little bit heavier but still numb. So I know that it's not uh, intended to be a sports SUV so maybe it doesn't matter for most of you but I wish there was a better translation of the road field to my hand through the steering. The second thing is not so much a complaint but almost a wish list and that is I wish they offered a hybrid or plug-in hybrid because obviously Kia's parent company Hyundai have many of these technologies available but uh, right now the Telluride is only available with one powertrain the 3.8 liter V6 with an 8 speed automatic. Now both of these works really well with each other but uh, in today's age we need a hybrid and better yet plug-in hybrid which I hope will come down the road. The third thing I want to point out is a little bit controversial because this is the one that's hard to predict and that is the long-term reliability of this Kia Telluride. Generally speaking Toyota has been the king when it comes to overall long-term reliability and Kia and Hyundai have actually proven to be quite reliable in the short term but over a course of 10 or 15 or 20 years if you were to own this one would it be as good as Toyota? Probably not, even though it's improving all the time. So that's something to keep in mind. I think it's fully fine for you know, three to five years, maybe even a little bit longer. Uh, and especially if you're leasing this vehicle and return it, it doesn't matter at all. Uh, but if you're one of those people who wants to buy a car and keep it for the rest of your life sort of thing, uh, I'm not quite convinced yet that this is the right one to do. Also, along with uh, long-term reliability, the only other potential issue compared to, let's say, Toyota or Honda is a resale value. Even though Kia has become very popular and people really, really enjoy the ownership, uh, in terms of resale value, it still cannot match some of the Japanese brands. Once again, that's improving. It will continue to get better. But if you're hoping to buy this for two or three years and sell it for a really, really good price, you might not get the same kind of resale value return as owning a Honda or Toyota or even Nissan. So that's pretty well my summary in terms of three things I like and three things I'm not too crazy about on this fantastic Kia Telluride. As I mentioned, I already own a Highlander, and if you were to ask me today which one would I buy for about the same price, there's no question that the Telluride is better in terms of performance, luxury, feel, and overall value, and I might even say that uh, quality and overall manufacturing fit and finish is not all that different from the Highlander, which is also built in the U.S. in Illinois. Uh, and I'm actually very impressed after doing this long-term drive to and from Seattle on this Kia Telluride. And you know what? If people ask me what three-row SUV I would recommend, well, this is definitely on top of my list. What do you guys think about the Kia Telluride? Let me know in the comments below. And also, if you can uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe, that'll be truly, truly appreciated. Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.